Hello, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah, and I want to give a special welcome to any new followers. We've had a few in the last week, and I think that's um, because I recently did an intro for a podcast that I follow. Um, it's the Unraveling podcast with Greg and Pam. Um, and if you don't know that podcast, go ahead and check it out. You can get it on any of the podcast apps, um, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, etc. Um, it's a really great one. It is audio only, um, so sometimes you have to use your imagination. Um, but uh, thank you, Greg, for that opportunity to record an intro for you, and welcome any fellow Unraveling fans. I appreciate that you're here. Um, so today I'm going to expand on what started as an Instagram post a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was knitting a gift for one of my neighbors, and um, I was knitting one of my own patterns, um, and I had made this pattern a few times before, um, but it wasn't just a self-aggrandizement or, you know, being a cheapskate, not, in, not wanting to pay for a pattern that had me um, knitting this particular hat for my neighbor. It was because I knew that the, the texture of it and the design would fit him really well. And as I was, you know, sitting contemplating this, I started thinking about some of the other projects that I had knit multiples of. Um, and there are many, and I'm going to go over um, a number of them today. Um, and sort of what makes something worthy of a repeat knit, or what makes something inviting to knit multiple times, um, or addicting to knit multiple times. Um, and I think there's a bunch of different characteristics. I put this question out, and many of you responded. Thank you for your responses. I'm going to read those as well. Um, but I think it can be boiled down to a, sort of a handful of characteristics. And not all repeat knits are going to fit all of these categories, but I think fitting several of them um, is kind of what, what makes something compelling to knit more than once. Um, and this is a little bit different than just wanting to knit a pattern because it's popular or having a lot of individual people knit the same pattern. Um, of course, you know, there are just like in anything, there's sort of um, trends and there's popular designs and designers um, that get a lot, a lot of attention. And so this isn't that question. It's not why does something become popular? It's more about why do we want to sometimes um, knit the same thing over and over again? Um, so the first criteria is that it's small and quick, um, or I should say small or quick. Um, and so things like hats, mittens, tend to kind of fall into this category. Um, although some larger projects, um, garment projects, um, can also fit into the, this category under the quick heading, um, because they're quick and easy to make. And, you know, I think this is just one of those things that you're more likely to repeat something if you'll know you get, you'll get through it quickly, if you know that it will be fast and satisfying, um, particularly maybe if you're gift knitting, you're familiar with a pattern, you know that it's going to be simple to do, and so the attraction there is to just whip out another one of X, Y, or Z, you know, hat patterns um, for that person on your list, because you don't have to overthink it, you don't have to worry about the fit. Um, like I said, you're familiar with that pattern or, uh, or that kind of thing. So another um, criteria that can make a pattern a good repeat knit is if it can accommodate many different people that you might be knitting for. Um, and this can include um, people of different sizes, people who um, like different styles of clothing, um, people who are attracted to different colors or different textures, people who um, might want their garments to fit differently. Um, if your pattern can sort of work and accommodate um, this range, then you might be tempted to knit the same thing, maybe out of a different yarn or in a different size um, for multiple people. And that kind of ties into the third thing I wrote down, which was a, an adaptable um, design that works with a lot of different colors or different types of yarn. Um, and I have some examples here that I'll show you in just a second. So, you know, if you can knit the same pattern out of almost any yarn in your stash, or maybe it does call for a specific weight of yarn, but it doesn't matter if that yarn is, you know, solid or variegated or speckled or self-striping or self-patterning, you know, if it works with any of those, then 
um, that's that's that adaptability piece. And it also keeps it interesting. If you are going to crank out, you know, five, six, seven, eight of the same pattern, you probably want to change up the yarns to keep it interesting for yourself as you as you make these things. Um, another thing that uh, some of you responded in that Instagram post was that the pattern was um, easily memorizable. And I would say, you know, yeah, that goes back to that quick and easy thing um, where if you can easily memorize the pattern, maybe it looks more complicated than it is or has some interesting design features, but is, is easy to reproduce and you don't have to keep referring to a pattern while you're knitting. Um, that just makes it easier to get through um, and more pleasant um, in some ways. Um, and then the last criteria, which I think is kind of, this is like the secret sauce of whether something is just, you know, easy um, or maybe comes in a bunch of different sizes is that there's something clever or interesting about the, either de the design or the construction um, or the, you know, how complicated it looks versus how easy it is to knit. There's something in that recipe that makes you feel kind of clever once you've once you've knit it. Um, I liked uh, what Mars of Hay Brownberry had to say in her comment was that it makes you feel empowered, um, right? It makes you feel like, ooh, I, I did this and you know, I want to do it again um, because it turned out so well the first time or it was so cool the way it came together the first time that I want to watch that process, that interesting construction or that fun texture um, play out again in another knit. So let's talk about some specific examples that I've knit. Um, so I did, I started with um, shamelessly self-promoting my own design that I was mentioning, and that was the Bethel hat pattern. And, you know, I think this does meet a couple of criteria. Um, it's sized for three adult sizes. Um, it does work with a, w a wide range of yarns. I'm holding up three different yarns or three different samples in very different yarns right here. Um, and so you can see these yarns have very different characteristics, but the hats all look good. I'll go through them one by one. So this is a very early sample. And this is knit out of a mohair and Shetland blend yarn from some of our fiber and some fiber that I bought from um, a friend of mine down the road, uh, Kristen Judkins, um, back when she had goats. And so it's just a, a solid, an undyed natural white yarn, um, and it has this mohair, so it's very shiny on camera. That's what's throwing back all the light. Um, but it just sort of looks like sheep's wool, um, you know, like little uh, kind of cart the way you would draw a cartoon sheep with that texture. Um, I think that's kind of what it looks like. And then again, um, so that's a plied yarn. This is another plied yarn, but it has a completely different feel. This is um, what I knit the original samples for this hat in. This is Music by Green Mountain Spinnery, and it's a heavily um, textured yarn. This is um, dyed uh, in the wool and then spun, and so you get these different flecks of color. Um, it's sort of a heathery, tweedy effect, and it's very rustic look. It's incredibly soft yarn, but it has a more of a rustic feel. And then this is a sample, that same hat, um, that I dyed, this is a mill spun yarn, a, a fat single. Um, so a very thick, almost a thick and thin yarn that I dyed with Black Eyed Susans from our garden in the summertime. And so again, the texture looks different between the different yarns, but I would say it looks equally as good. So here, you, de you definitely have a more defined texture in this yarn than you do here but this still looks cool. So I think that's, that's kind of one of those um, things where you can use a bunch of different kinds of yarn, knit the same thing, and you get different effects, and you sort of feel like magic. Um, this is another hat that I've knit uh, many, many times. This is not my design. This is called the Graham hat, um, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I will link to every pattern I mention in the show notes for this episode, so be sure to check the down bar below this video, um, I'm going to talk about probably more than 20 patterns. So if you want to go back and find any that I mentioned, um, just click the, the link to the show notes on our blog. Um, so this is the Graham hat. This is uh, designed by Jennifer Adams, and it's, it's my earliest repeat knit. Um, what's cool about this hat is that you actually knit it inside out. 
So you knit it on this side where you have a lot more knit stitches going on. And it doesn't look like a much. It looks like, um, well, it is broken ribbing, essentially. But then when you turn it inside out, which is the way that it's designed, um, it's got this cool texture all over it. Sorry about the dog hair. Um, and it's pretty universal. You know, it's nice and unisex, just like the last hat I showed you. Um, and it does work in different yarns. This is a tonal that I dyed with some acid dyes. Um, but you could certainly use, you know, any kind of self-striping or speckled or variegated yarns that you wanted for this. Or something like a tweed would look really nice. Um, and it's just that simple act of knitting it one way and then turning it inside out that makes you feel like you sort of know a secret that other people don't know. Um, makes you feel clever. So that's kind of fun. So this is the Jacques Cousteau hat. It's another one I've made a whole bunch of, um, mostly for gifts. It's very quick and easy. It's, it's an asymmetrical rib pattern. And then what's cool about this one is that the, the decreases happen in an interesting way. So you get this cool kind of spiral effect at the top of the hat when it's, when it's on the person's head. Um, and this is a design by Lala Hohanpalo. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, again, the Jacques Cousteau hat. So, and I've knit this a whole bunch, um, mostly for men, but certainly, you know, I think anyone could wear this. Um, someone who likes a, a very clean, kind of streamlined look, um, or a more masculine, uh, style. It works with that. Um, and then some other, um, kind of current projects. So the one that I'm wearing, um, is a sweater. This is the... Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. Um, she's also known as Savoring Knitting. And I originally picked this pattern um, because I liked it, but also because I already had this yarn. And I was I had been trying to find a good pattern to use with this yarn, and I had tried a couple of different patterns with it and struck out. And so when I saw this sweater and the and the yarn requirements, I thought, you know, that would be a nice way to celebrate that variegated um, hand-dyed yarn, this is from Jill Draper, um, without um, muddling up some kind of complicated texture or cables or something like that. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want the yarn uh, to detract from the pattern and I didn't want the pattern to distract from the yarn. So this nice, it's very simple, it just has these little eyelet details and that's really the only kind of standout feature of this sweater, otherwise it's just plain stocking it down the body and it really does showcase the yarn. Um, and the fit's really nice. And so I like the sweater so much, after I finished, I decided to uh, get some yarn, I actually requested this as a gift, um, and got it for, for this holiday season. And so I'm working on another version out of a completely different yarn. Um, this is the Green Mountain Spinnery Mountain Mohair yarn. And here's my sweater in progress. You can see I've done the, the eyelets and I'm on to, I've uh, separated for the sleeves and I'm on to working on the body. But let me hold the two yarns up side by side so you can see they're very, very different. So here's the Jill Draper. It's a four ply Aran weight and it's very dense and I apologize it acts like a Swiffer and it picks up every little thing so there's some fluff and stuff on there. Um, but yeah the Jill Draper is you can see how and very tightly tightly plied there. Whereas the Green Mountain Spinnery is a single. It's a thick fluffy single. It's very airy. And this is going to bloom up a lot when I wash the sweater um, and, and poof up even more. So it's almost going to become, you know, it looks like a DK to maybe worsted weight there, but it's going to, it's going to fluff up a great deal and become almost a bulky weight um, when I wash this. I'll hold both of these up side by side so you can see, see how different they are. And so that's one of the features of this sweater is it's a great it's kind of open canvas. Um, it's an easy quick knit. It's knit on size 10 needles and so even though it's not a small item um, for a pullover it goes very quickly. I can I could probably knit one in about two, two and a half weeks um, if I knit on it every day. Um, I think my last one took me about two and a half or three weeks to knit. So you know that's another enticement to consider. Maybe you're 
you have a dearth of sweaters in your wardrobe or something, um, and some of these quick and easy patterns um, would help fill that gap, or might be a nice, uh, again, a nice gift. A lot of a lot of the time we're repeating patterns because we're knitting things to give away, and you know maybe there's somebody in your life that's sweater worthy, but you don't want to commit to knitting them, you know, a huge like fingering weight sweater or something that's going to take you months and months. Um, so choosing something like this that's plain and simple. Um, that's pretty easy to get through in terms of the pattern and also um, comes in a big range of sizes as well. I think Amy's done a pretty good job there being um, fairly inclusive in her sizing. So, you know, I think those are a bunch of the criteria that, that we just talked about. Um, being flexible in terms of style, being flexible in terms of yarn choice um, and sizing. So those are just some of the things that I've been working on. And I have one more, um, which is a sock. And I had some good recommendations on sock patterns as well. Um, this is a sock. So um, Mars of Hay Brownberry, whom I just mentioned, um, came out with a new sock pattern at the end of last year. And this is it. This is the R&R &R socks, which stands for Rest and Rejuvenation. And um, she had a little knit along when she launched the pattern. And I couldn't decide on my color scheme. So what I did was I knit the first part of this pattern, I knit the toe and then just a little bit in, in two different color arrangements. Um, both, both socks used the same yarn, which I have here. So in both of them, I was using this purple and yellow together. But um, I wanted to see how they would look depending on, on how I did the contrast. Um, this yellow is kind of blowing out. Let me hold it back here. There we go. So in one sock, I did the yellow as the main color and the purple as the contrast. And then in this one that I'm knitting now, I've got it the other way around. So I've got the purple as the background color and the yellow as the accent color. And at first I thought I might just knit a funny pair of socks and have one of each. Um, but as I started knitting them, I thought, you know, my neighbor could really use a pair of socks. She's had a tough year. Um, and I just thought this yellow was so like sunshiny and cheerful and warm. And so I decided to just continue on, set this guy aside for, t for the time being and continue on and make the two pairs of, uh, the, the two socks, the, the full pair, um, to give to her as a gift. And I did that. And then, um, you know, now I'm going to cast, I've, I've kept my, my tester swatch sock sort of thing, um, and continuing on and I'm going to make myself a pair. Um, what I like about this pattern is a few of the things, again, that I mentioned. Um, the main thing is that this texture, I think, looks very complicated. Um, I couldn't, from looking at the pattern photos, I couldn't figure out what Mars had done um, to, to achieve this effect. It sort of looks like garden lattice or fish scales or something like that, but it's in two colors. And I thought, ooh, color work sucks. That's going to be tough. It's not, you guys. This is a very simple pattern. And so um, it's that easy memorizable and it makes you sm you know feel smart um, because it looks more complicated than it is. The other thing I like about this pattern and the, I think the reason I'm going to knit more of these is that combining colors in a sock is very interesting. And it's a great way to use up sock yarn that you know, maybe you bought when you first start knit, started knitting or first started knitting socks and that you're not wild about anymore. Um, I know I was certainly my tastes have changed in the 15 years since I started knitting. And I have some really nice high quality sock yarn that I've just never used because I was never a fan of the color. Um, and so having a pattern like this where you can combine colors and kind of get different effects, that's really encouraging to me because you know you might not like a certain color by itself, but if you partner it up with something else in your stash, you might find something really interesting and engaging. So. And I have a bunch of different ideas for different kinds of yarn that I want to use for that same pattern. So, you know, again, that's ticking a lot of those boxes. So um, I really appreciate everyone who commented on that original Instagram post. And I'd love to hear, if you're watching this video, um, I'd love to hear down below in the comments um, right here, are there any patterns that you've knit multiples of or been tempted to knit multiples of? And, you know, what did you find engaging about those? Um, but I'll run through the patterns that everyone else kind of mentioned um, 
because I think it's interesting um, and I want to give everyone credit as well. So um, I've also knit a whole bunch of the barley hats by Tin Can Knits and I've talked to a couple of my friends. That one's really popular. That's a free one and it's also a great one to, to teach people how to knit um, because it's mostly stockinette but there's a little garter st stitch section. Um, the Boosta Beanie, I've seen a lot on social media and I've seen not just um, this beanie as a popular pattern, but I've seen people posting, you know, here's my stack of Boosta Beanies that I've I've made. Here's my, my 10, my 12, my 20 Boosta Beanies that I've been cranking out. Um, I can't seem to stop knitting them. That was a um, free pattern that was featured for the Shetland Wool Week a few years ago, and it's by Gudrun Johnston. Um, it's now available as a paid pattern, I believe, on Ravelry. Um, going back a few decades, the Baby Surprise Jacket by um, the, the Mama of Modern Knitting, um, who is Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, I've knit a whole bunch of those, and they've all been gifts, so I don't have any. Um, but I actually heard Greg, um, who is uh, Knitting Daddy on Ravelry, um, and he is one of the hosts of the Unraveling podcast. Um, he said he's knit several Baby Surprise Jackets. Actually, I think he and Pam, his co-host, have knit several. Um, and this is one of those patterns that's very flexible and allows you to use almost any weight of yarn that you'd like. So if you're knitting for a really tiny baby, you can use, you know, fingering or sport weight. And then if you're knitting for a larger baby or a small child, you could use, um, you know, like a worsted or a bulky weight and you would automatically get a larger size. Um, so that's really cool. And it has an interesting construction too. You knit this thing that sort of looks like a manta ray and then you fold it up in this certain way and ta-da, suddenly you have a sweater and you just have to sew a couple of um, short seams uh, to finish it off. So that's a really cool one. It definitely makes you feel like a genius um, when you knit that pattern. Um, and then you all, again, had some suggestions. So let's just run through those. The uh, Azel Pullover by Heidi May. Um, Sandy, who is uh, Sandy Cook 78 on Instagram, had recommended that one. The Langfield Hat by Martina Bem. Um, that one was recommended by Angela, who's Angela Loomis. Um, the Clopotus by uh, Wooly Wormhead. Um, the Sockhead Hat by Kelly McClure. And the Midas Hat by Laura Reinbach um, were all recommended by Mars, who is Hay Brownberry. And again, the, all three hats, um, and I know that Mark, Mars likes to wear hats and give hats away. Um, but yeah, any kind of hat pattern that is compelling, that's interesting, that has a little bit of a texture on it, something like that, it does kind of make you want to crank out a whole bunch of them. The Murphy Bay hat um, is another one in that category, and that was uh, by Jenny Weeb, recommended by my friend Kristen of Gilead Fiber Farm. The Clark Socks by Jocelyn Salem. Uh, recommended by Natalie of M Remembrances Pottery, and that's another one that looks more complicated than it is. Um, and Natalie had also said that she really likes the fit, so that's another one um, where you know it, maybe you're knitting a bunch of things for yourself, um, but you you find the right thing. It's kind of like when I go clothes shopping, and I have some friends um, who say the same thing. You know, you walk into a store, it's hard to find things that you really like or that fit you well. And then if you find something like a shirt or a pair of pants that you really like, you might buy it in like one of every color that they have, right? This is sort of the knitting equivalent of that. You know, if these socks fit me really well, I'm gonna make 10 pair in, in all different colors. Um, the Ricky hat, uh, which is spelled R-I-K-K-E, that's by Sarah Young, and it was uh, recommended by Heather, who's Heather Rocks 9. And then um, the lady Lynn, and I'm assuming your first name is Lynn, um, had recommended a whole bunch of patterns, um, including the Lucy hat by Karina Spencer, the Lotus hat by Uptown Pearl, and Capucine by Adela Ilichimova, um, as well as the Blackthorn hat by Sunflower uh, Knit. And the lady Lynn, she also recommended a bunch of fingerless mitts patterns, so I'll grab those. Um, and again, put links in the show notes. Um, then we had the Umfile sweater, and I hope I'm saying that right. It's A-F-M-A-E-L-I. No, it's got to be Afmali, maybe? Um, 
by Vedis John's Daughter. And that was recommended by, by my friend Mary Lou, um, who is the singing knitter on Ravelry. Um, Mary Lou's, uh, this is a um, Scandinavian style sweater with a colored yoke. And Mary Lou said that she's knitted in a whole bunch of different color combinations. So again, that's one where you're using up yarn in your stash. You can probably use a bunch of different kinds of yarn. You can use little bits and pieces and leftovers from other projects. And you can have a lot of fun with your palette because that'll really change the look of the sweater. Um, Sweet Coriolis Socks by Kat Bordy uh, was recommended by Tamara, who is Kat Jem Lib. The Monkey Socks by Cookie A was recommended by my friend Barb, who's BT Mel. Um, and those are cool because they have this interesting uh, texture that goes in different directions. And, and again, I'm assuming that, you know, they're maybe more complicated looking than they are to actually knit. Um, the Kia Socks by Dawn Henderson. Um, that was recommended by Tauna, who's Tay LMA. The Hat Dana um, by Denise Peron of Baron Handmade. Um, that was recommended by Rosemary, who's Rosie Mac 65. And that one has been in my queue since uh, it first came out. Um, I even have some really nice luxury yarn that I'm going to make my hat Dana out of. just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I'm a little bit scared to start it because I'm afraid that, yes, this is going to be an addicting knit. And I'm suddenly going to find that I need, you know, 25 hat Danas uh, in my wardrobe and for all of my friends. So I've kind of been putting that one off. Um, and then the last one, I think, from the comments uh, was the Frisian Shawl by Brittany Wilson, who is Stephanie. Um, uh, she goes by Indigo Dog Montana on social media. And um, Stephanie mentioned that the Frisian Shawl is a, a great one skein project, um, a little shawlette. And that's really nice, again, to use up those single skeins that you bought maybe um, spur of the moment or they were on sale or they were at a show and then they just accidentally like le leapt into your hand um, and then you get home and you still like them but you're not really sure what to do with them um, so any of those kind of single skein projects that look really cool or show off can show off a special skein of yarn um, I'd say the hat, hat Dana is also that kind of project because it only needs one skein of yarn and can really be a nice showcase you know you're going to wear it on your head so people are going to see it um, and that's a great way to, to use up that yarn and also show it off um, and give it center stage. So something to think about. Um, it's not that I'm trying to create um, patterns that are repeat knits or anything like that, or even particularly looking for them, although I am going to go check out a lot of these patterns because um, I hadn't heard of them before. But it's just something interesting to think about as to what, what makes something a repeat knit um, what makes it very versatile? What makes it fun to come back to again and again? Um, and again, if you have any uh, other patterns that I hadn't mentioned, please leave them below in the comments. We love to share, um, share all this information with each other and learn from one another. And I really appreciate you being here, taking the time, and come back next week. We will have more for you. Thanks a lot.